Yeah. We finally got our bolts in. We got two of them. Uh, I'll start with the motor. Your hood release is right there, just like it is on a normal uh, compact car. Same with the hood. You've got a hood prop that is located right here. Now it's a little different than a regular compact car, being that you have your electric motor is on this side of the car, and that's what propels this vehicle, whether it's in the gasoline mode or the electric mode. The electric motor propels it. So you're not switching actually to a gasoline propulsion method, but you're staying with the electric, and all the motor does is generate electricity to run this vehicle. It's the same motor that's in the cruise. It's a 1.4, uh, 85 horsepower, and your electric motor is uh, 150, 149 horsepower. It's about the same as a 150 horsepower. It'll go from zero to 60 in about 8.8 .8 seconds. Uh, top speed around 100 miles an hour, so you have plenty of passing with it. Uh, this motor, all it does is generate electricity. So it may never kick on except when it goes into a maintenance mode, which it's going to do about every three months. Uh, and once a year it will burn uh, one gallon of gas out of the gas tank just so it doesn't varnish over. You have to run premium fuel in it. You can't just run regular gas, it has to be premium fuel. Uh, another thing, the gas tank is it's sealed and pressurized. It's not a conventional gas tank, 9.3 gallons. And you may use, if, if you commute about 40 miles a day, you're only going to use about 3 gallons of that in a year. Unless you go on a trip. You can go up to uh, roughly around between 299 and 350 miles, depending on which mode you're using to, to drive and what comfort conditions you like in the car because the comfort conditions will deplete the battery. And it'll tell you, we'll go over that in just a second. You've got your regular uh, oil fill and dipsticks here, your um, coolant, your uh, with your antifreeze, uh, your regular brake fluids, everything is exactly the same on a regular conventional car, except that the electric motor is what propels it. Now, the next thing, how do we get this charged so that you can run it? Your charging station is right here on this fender, and you can either you can either pop it with your remote start, with your key fob, or inside the door, just like your trunk release on a conventional compact, it's right there. You can pop it right there before you get out. And it's also on the key fob. And you would, your, your charging station looks like this. You can have one of these. And this just plugs in, this station here just plugs right into a regular house outlet. Now this is gonna take approximately, depending on how depleted the batteries are, eight to 10 hours to charge. When you plug this in, there's a little trigger here. You push the trigger in and you just pop it right in there. There's a little light on it that even shows you that you can see even if it's a little dark in there. Lights it up just like a little flashlight. You plug that in. Now it's not gonna instantly start <coughs> charging. It'll take uh, roughly from three seconds to 20 seconds to start charging. So you don't have to worry about if you're standing in water or anything like that. You're, there's no electricity going through the the cord until the car makes contact with that cord and it's like a fiber optic it'll make contact with that and make sure it's not the the uh, the fast charge or the, the slow charge and then it'll start charging and the fast charge will take you have to get it set up we get it set up with SPX 
It's an outside company that sells those chargers. And you'll have it uh, placed on a wall. And it's a four hour charge as opposed to an eight or 10 hour charge. It's about a, about a $2,500 deal to have that installed. Now, this, this has another feature when the car is locked. If you have this parked someplace that's not around, you know, uh, in a secure zone, somebody can't just take and pull your cord out when this car is locked. That cord is locked in there. So you have to either push your cord release or unlock the car for that cord to come out. So you can actually, if they ever put charging stations up around, park your car on the street, plug it into a street, lock your car up, and you won't have to worry about somebody stealing your cord because they can't. <coughs> um, another feature with this is when you get close enough here, we can just push this button and unlock the doors. One touch unlocks all the doors, and one touch will unlock your driver's door, and then touch it again and unlock all the doors. And then that also unlocks your, so you can come up with your fob in your pocket, it doesn't have to be out, hit that button, and then you can open your, then you can pull your cord out, wrap it all up. Um, you don't need a key for your, for your hatch. There's a little button, just like on the cruise right here, just a little rubber button, you hit that, and it'll pop that and put your cord in there and then you can get in the car and power it up. Yes, sir. Right. Now this also has, you have storage underneath of here. There's no spare tire with this automobile. You have a, uh, a pump and, and fix a flat. There's no room, any place to put a spare tire. So uh, you have uh, five years, 100,000 miles roadside assistance. If, if you happen to get a nail and can't inflate the car. How does that work? It's the same as in the Camaro. It's that's just that's a battery you can take the car off. It's just a little pump that you pull out, <coughs> plug it into your lighter, one of your power ports. You have them. You have power ports here. You have one in the in the center in the back, and one up front, and one in the. Um, center console. Mark, if it goes at a runs out of battery juice, does the engine take over or the gas engine? Yeah, the gas engine will generate power for the car. Yeah, you'll always have electrical power. And if you don't, you can jump this car off. There's these two little battery deals here. You pull them out and you get a jump. Jump starts your gas. 